Good evening. I'm Mike Mammon. I'm the Facilities and Safety Manager here at Granada Hills Charter High School. And I was asked to come give a few words. I'm going to be brief about uh, our emergency response plan. Uh, it's important to know that Granada Hills Charter High School and our Executive Director, Mr. Bauer, makes safety one of the number one priorities of the school next to education. His uh, philosophy, again, is if the kids and the parents and the families don't feel safe bringing their kids to school here, then they're not going to learn and uh, well. So there's not, I'm going to go over a few things, tell you a little bit about me and then a few unique things Granada does. I'm not going to steal a lot of what you're hearing from Jill Barnes from LUSD. We are an independent charter school, but we're uh, located on a district campus and we contract for services with the school police department. So our emergency plans and safety plans don't differ that much from the district. Uh, we also have know that many of our families feed into our school from district schools. So we don't want to reinvent the wheel and have parents come and have to learn how we do things completely different in an emergency. So we do follow similar protocols in the district that I'm sure uh, Jill's going to speak to later. But uh, a couple of unique things about myself. Uh, I, as a safety manager, one of my priorities is to be the emergency manager for the campus, make sure that we're prepared. We prepare for all hazards, whether it's you know man-made, whether it's Mother Nature or other, we prepare for our daily emergencies, um, and we make I make sure we have our drills scheduled, and uh, we do a couple unique things with drills, uh, particularly for the uh, lockdown scenario. I know we're talking a lot about natural disasters today. Uh, one of the unique things Renata does, and that I don't think a lot of schools do, and uh, Jill can correct me if I'm wrong, we do a lot of uh, out of classroom lockdown drills where our students are not in class. Students from the age of elementary school are prepared for fire drills, evacuating. They're prepared for a lockdown when they're in the classroom. Teachers shut their doors, uh, something bad's happening, and keep the kids inside. But what happens when those kids are outside at lunch, nutrition, before school, after school? There's an athletic event going on in the field. How do you respond? So we do uh, two or three of these a year, and they also usually are what we call unannounced or surprise drills. We don't tell anyone they're happening. It's easy to prepare what you're going to do when you know it's coming for a drill, but as was stated earlier, we don't know when an earthquake's going to happen. We don't know when an uh, active shooter type scenario is going to happen on campus. So we try and practice the way it's going to happen, which is unannounced. And so, uh, again, with our large campus of uh, close to 5,000 students now, if it's lunchtime and we have to lock down the campus, we can get all of our students uh, safely into a building structure room locked uh, within about three to four minutes, which is uh, pretty uh, amazing based on the size of the campus and the population. So that's, again, one of the unique things that I was asked to talk about it, that Granada does uh, for that. Myself, I'm on an emergency search and rescue team. I plan and am involved in training and drills all the time, uh, whether it's earthquake, fire, flood. Uh, we work regularly with side-by-side uh, with the public safety officials. Uh, myself and all our members from that team are CERT trained. We brought CERT here to the school. Anytime uh, CERT asks, can we use Granada to put on classes? We offer them space and provide that space because we, again, feel it's a valuable resource to get everyone trained and prepared ahead of time. Uh, a couple of unique stories uh, about the Northridge earthquake and preparedness. So my uh, life of being prepared started before I was even a high school student here at Granada. I have an alumni here. Uh, my mother was very paranoid about anything happening and wanted to make sure everyone was prepared. So when she was PTA president here, she was uh, one of the first ones to purchase the blue emergency barrels for the schools. We had, like many schools, containers full of emergency water. So I was about 10 because my older brother went here and I'm out filling up barrels with a hose getting the school prepared before I even was a student here. This was long before the Northridge earthquake came along. So here's what happens, Northridge earthquake comes along, we're like many people here, affected personally, uh, have to leave our house. So we come here to the school because we know all the supplies are here at the school. We know where the barrels are, we filled them, and uh, assist with getting, this, everyone showed up here, assist with getting people what they needed. Unfortunately, as the Red Cross kind of mentioned, there's a delay in kind of figuring out, surveying what people need after a disaster. Here at Granada Hills, uh, it took about three days for the Red Cross to show up and open the shelter here at the high school. Uh, in the meantime, though, as a school, we were serving those people that needed with what we had, using school supplies and things like that, which probably wouldn't be popular these days without permission, but 
in an emergency, you do what you got to do. And again, being there so long ago, things were different back then. Um, so now Granada actually has a, a 10,000 gallon emergency water tank with shutoffs that in case of an emergency with auto shutoffs and uh, triple carbon filtration and ways to uh, distribute that. We don't have the water barrels anymore. We do have uh, some supplies uh, in water that's not part of that tank in case that's compromised. Uh, but that's our source of water that's also, again, unique uh, to Granada. Uh, let's see. The... Okay, so again, going back to another... We, with the uh, earthquake that happened here in 94, we were very fortunate that the... Our campus was not as heavily damaged as what you guys saw in the Kennedy High School, but the worst damage is right here where you were sitting. If you guys look behind you, there's a line in the ceiling that goes up across the back. Uh, being that I was here that morning, there was a hole in the back of that ceiling that you can't see where the hole was. It started about as like a three foot hole, and by the end of a couple of days of aftershocks, from that line back uh, was actually, that whole soffit was on the floor. So, uh, yeah, yeah, just that we're here, I thought I'd point that out. The, the school now has been obviously retrofitted. There's a lot more that's been done to keep it safe, but uh, that's a couple of unique stories. Again, a reunification, a request gate. Again, we follow the district policies on that. Um, we saw a little bit of that uh, with your emergency today. And we always like to take and look at and talk to the partners in public safety and law enforcement and find out what is learned, because we realize probably that's one of the hardest things that has to be done. Uh, especially with the large size population. So we try and tell our parents we have some instructions. If you, when you walk out the main gate, if you look, we have instruction posted uh, in, on metal signs on what to bring, what to do, how to line up. So we try and pre-plan, have as much ahead of time available. Um, if there's any, if our parents here, one of the things we say it's one of the most important is bring your ID with you and have your ID. Um, that's all I have for now. If there's anything unique to Granada, any questions specific to Granada, I'll be around afterwards. But I think you'll hear a lot more detail. Uh, and again, if you listen to what the district does, it's very similar to what we do here because we uh, learn from them. Thank you. I also want to thank Mike for having his staff set up this entire event, the tables, the microphones. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, so since everybody's telling earthquake stories, I have my own. Now I was around for the 71 earthquake, and let me tell you, it thrashed our house. But I didn't mind because it was the only time the rest of the house looked like my room. <laughs> Special guest, Pat Hall and Glenn Dollar from the Community Emergency Response Team, Battalion 15. I hesitate because that's not on my list, but I had to remember it. <laughs> thank you. Good evening. Good evening. And welcome, and thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope this is all worth your time. So my name is Glenn Dollar. And with me is Pat Hall, and we're the CERT Battalion 15 coordinators. So before I get into the talk, just a real brief uh, overview of the structure. CERT follows the same structure as the LA Fire Department. Geographically, we're broken into four bureaus. The Valley Bureau, which of course is where we're at, West, South, and Central. The Valley Bureau is the largest bureau. It's broken down into, thank you, uh, five battalions, and we're Battalion 15, which covers Northridge, Chatsworth, Porter Ranch, and Granada Hills. So here we are, uh, Battalion 15. Uh, we'll skip over some of what we've heard already tonight. Uh, first slide, Pat, if you would, please. Uh, so what is sir? I'm going to go ahead and start talking. I know we're short on time. What is sir? It's the Community Emergency Response Team. We are a volunteer organization. We provide free training to the residents of Los Angeles 
to teach them how to protect themselves, their family, and their neighborhood, neighbors in case of emergency or disaster. The training is actually provided by the Los Angeles Fire Department, and we'll talk more tonight about that training. CERT was uh, developed by the Los Angeles Fire Department actually back in 1985. Uh, they went to uh, Mexico City after that event. There was a big earthquake in 85 in Mexico. They went to Japan, who had been doing a lot of preparedness, was way ahead of the United States at that time. And based on what they learned in those two events, they put together the CERT program, am among other things. Since then, it has expanded nationwide. It's in every state. It's also in about five country, other countries around the world and we keep growing. That first year in 86, I think they trained 30 people. Now on average, we're training five to 800 people a year. Um, we operate under the direction of the fire department, so they are our sponsor. We, we report to them, and our primary goal is to provide support until the professionals arrive. So again, first and foremost, we promote and teach emergency preparedness. Like I said, the LA Fire Department and CERT put on a seven-week class that teaches people how to be prepared. We help neighbors and the community in case of emergencies. And while so far we've been talking about major disasters, earthquakes, there are many emergencies that we help with. As you see here, we helped with the Chatsworth train crash. We've helped with a number of the fires, uh, both going backwards and this Creek, the Creek fire, the Skirball fire. We were out there. Now, we're not trained firefighters. We're not on the lines helping fight the fire. But what we are doing is helping feed the firemen. We're doing fire patrol. We're doing hydro what we call hydration. So that firemen don't have to take that job on as well. They can focus on fighting the fire, and then when they take a break, they have a hot meal, they have cold water, and whatever else they need, we're there to help out. And, and also, I wanted to mention with the uh, winds that have been happening a lot, you see the uh, wires go down, and you typically see it shortly after it happens if there's uh, two or three fire trucks and probably six, seven people standing there waiting for DWP to uh, actually handle the uh, wires down. So we as volunteers then go out, that's another type of call out that we do, and we sit there and wait for the, for the DWP. And you get the biggest smiles uh, you've ever seen from a firefighter because you're there to relieve them, and they can actually go back and do what they do. Okay. Let's go ahead and just skip the next slide. So, when disaster strikes, like I said, so far we've been talking about the earthquake, but there are any number of disasters or emergencies. The most common emergency in Los Angeles is a house fire. The Red Cross responds to eight house fires per day on average. And I get that, and what that means is people now have lost their house, they have no place to live, and the Red Cross is out there trying to help them get a hotel room or a place to stay that night. That's just the ones that the Red Cross is called out to. You can imagine how many events the fire department responds to every day. About 80% of those events are medical emergencies. When a fire strikes, anybody have any idea how long you should dig yourself to get out of your house? No, if a, when a fire strikes, how long do you have to get out of your house? 20 seconds. Excuse me? Somebody leave their clothes. Yeah, I don't need them. No, yours? Okay, sorry. Uh, roughly two minutes. Okay, roughly two minutes. So we talked about having that bag ready, that go bag, if you will, or bug out bag, they call it, or emergency bag. You need to have it ready because in two minutes, you don't have time to grab those documents, grab a pair of clothes.